Kadi, an OET English trainer working at Metsiti International Academy in Kotem. I'm here to teach English grammar, that is the functional grammar or the practical grammar for the OET students. The basic of grammar is the parts of speech which is divided into eight, namely nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. Today we are going to have a study of verbs. Verbs are of three types, or put in other words, verbs can be divided into three categories, that is, number one, verbs that denote or show facts, status or being, and in a single word you can say verbs that come in the form of being. Number two, verbs that denote or show position, or put in one word, verbs in the form of have. Number three, verbs that denote or show action, or verbs that come in the form of do. So here, for the verbs that show uh, facts or status, usually uh, we say be or to be. In some grammar books it is mentioned as be, and in some other grammar books it's to be. Other than the three categories, the verbs are again you know, classified or divided into four, four columns like base form, which is the present tense, past tense, past participle, and present participle. In the base form or past present tense, there are two forms, that is am and s, which are singular, and the past tense of both these is the verb was. Coming to the plural of the word be, R is the plural form and the past tense of R is the word where and there it is the word been and there is one thing common about present participle that is for all the verbs it is the ing form for example if if here have is the verb and you know having is the present participle and if do is the main verb doing is the present participle of the same so to give examples of uh, the uh, first category of verbs that is the word be am is only used for the subject i for example i am a teacher or i am a nurse in the oet context you know miss mary is a cancer patient or if we are talking about a past situation miss mary was a cancer patient likewise for the plural subject the husband and wife are cancer patients because there we are giving two subjects together so which you know together become a plural subject and referring to a past situation the husband and wife were cancer patients and likewise now coming to the second category that is the verbs that denote or show position uh, it could be for example pen I have a pen she has a pen you know and the past tense is had for both here you know like here you have singular and plural have is the plural form and has is the singular form to show a position and for both you know the, the past tense is the word had when we are talking about something that we had before we say you know like for example I had a pen means in the past um, like giving an example in the OET context you know the patient has severe cough or pain or headache it's about the present situation whereas if you're talking about a situation of the past we say the patient had a severe cough or pain or headache something notable is that you know the word having it cannot say for any fever or headache and likewise the word having is used usually, for example, as a substitute of the word eating or drinking. For example, I can say, I'm having my breakfast, or the patient is having her breakfast, or lunch, or dinner. But you can't say the patient is having a fever, or headache, or uh, pain. And also, you know, we can use this ING form when we want to say, uh, I'm having a very good time, or 
we are having a very good time. So that is possible. Okay, now coming to the third category, that is the verbs that denote or show action. So mainly we discussed uh, this verb that is do, which is in the plural form and thus in the singular form. For both, you know, the past tense is did, past participle is done and as I said before, for all the uh, verbs, the present participle is the ing. So here it is doing. So for example, another verb that is take, which changes to took in the past tense, taken in the past participle form. The patient takes this medicine usually or regularly or twice a day or thrice a day. So there we use uh, this form, here it is plural but otherwise it is takes for the singular subject. And when you're talking about a past situation, the patient took this medicine last night or this morning, which refers to a past situation. And for all the perfect tenses, we use the past participle form. So here the patient has already taken this medicine or for example, the patient has taken this medicine several times. Again, one more example that is the patient has to undergo. When we talk about future situation, we use the base form of the verb. The patient has to undergo a surgery. The patient underwent a surgery last week or you give some past dates or any past time. The patient has undergone a surgery. In which case, we don't say any time factor. Well, um, as a general rule, singular verbs should be used with singular subjects and uh, plural verbs should be used with plural subjects with just an exception, the subject I. For I alone, we have a particular verb that is am, but that is only for the first category of verbs. But in both the other cases, the second category and the third category, the subject I takes a plural verb. For example, I have a car, you know, or it can say like I have fever, I have severe headache, a pain or fever. Likewise, for the third category, again, we use a plural verb for the singular subject I. Like for example, I do the job of a teacher or I do my work well. So this is an exceptional rule. Since OET is an English exam, um, the OET students make sure that they use proper grammar in order to get a pass in OET exam. That's all. Thank you.